Hi, I'm Chandra Waller, your Santa Barbara County Chief Executive Officer. Every year, the county goes through the large and difficult process of developing a balanced budget. This video will show you how we do it and how we've improved the process to make it more effective and efficient. Our primary goals are to develop a budget that addresses county priorities and to present a budget document with high quality information. This year, for example, we've changed the budget book's orientation to make it easier to read. We've decreased the details on how divisions operate and added information that shows how departments use your money effectively and efficiently. We replaced a book encumbered with statistics with one that focuses on delivering the highest quality information for the public and policymakers. I encourage you to watch the video, be informed, and then participate. The county's annual budget is your annual budget, and we hope that by watching this, you'll have a better understanding of the process and how you can play an important role in it. Thanks for watching. Many of you might recognize the following scenario. You have a dining room table or a kitchen counter and it's covered with papers, pay stubs and bills, and you have some parents who are deciding how to pay for those bills, how to plan for retirement, how to plan for college, or buy a new car. Well, this is basic family budgeting, and the county does something very similar to it, albeit on a much greater scale, every year. Well, what is a budget? A budget is a detailed financial plan of estimated revenues and expenditures for a specific period of time. More than that, the budget is a physical document that says what the county wants to do, how it plans on doing it, and where it plans on getting the resources and money to achieve those goals. It is important to understand some key terms before we learn how a budget is created. Goals are broad examples of what the government would like to do. Objectives are like goals, but they are specific and measurable examples of what the government does. A program is the specific entity that gets funded to manage the plan. Resources are things like employees and money that are used for operating the program. And what is time? Time is the measurement of the duration of events and the intervals between them. We find examples of the budget process and these key terms in the Budget Books D section. For example, in the 2011-2012 County Budget Book, the Probation Department said one of their goals was to operate quality juvenile treatment and detention facilities and programs. An objective for this goal was to ensure that 90% of the probationers graduated from the Los Prietos Boys Camp program. Their resources for operating this program included $8.9 million in funds and 69 employees allocated to juvenile services in the time period of fiscal year 2011-2012. So that's the county budget in a nutshell goals, objectives, programs, resources, and time that address what the county thinks is important, how they plan on doing what's important, and where they plan on getting the resources. And it may seem obvious, but why do we budget? Well, the first reason is accountability. We budget so we can explain what funds we have, where they're going, and why they're going there. We also budget so we can schedule and plan programs. And the third reason we budget is because it is our legal responsibility. The County Budget Act outlines the state controller forms and schedules necessary for the county budget to conform with state law. The County Budget Act specifically states that the administrative officer, in our case the county CEO, must submit a recommended budget to the Board of Supervisors for review and approval on or before June 30th of each year. The budget cycle goes through four phases, preparation, approval, execution, and audit. The preparation phase starts around October when the county sets the budget policies. These policies are broad principles that help the county develop the budget. These policies are accountability and transparency because information about how public monies are spent should be easy to understand, policy-based budgeting, which means resources are distributed according to board policy direction, historical spending, and federal and state mandates, a balanced budget, because revenues should be equal to expenditures, risk identification and mitigation, because events, circumstances, and issues that pose significant risks should be reduced, a reserve of 8% of the general fund in case of emergencies, identified service level changes so the public knows what it can expect from the government, and funding for capital improvements and facilities maintenance. In December, 
The CEO kicks off the budget book production process by issuing targets to the departments. This is when the departments learn how much money they'll receive from the general fund. Once the department heads receive these numbers, they must balance their needs with the money they receive. Policy-based budgeting is important because it helps to formulate the general fund allocation policy. And this is the policy that directs how money from the general fund is distributed. Money from local tax and services is called the general fund, and it's the money that the CEO and the Board of Supervisors have discretion over. There are a total of nine general fund allocation policies. For the first policy, departments receive the same amount of money in the next year that they did in the previous year. Second, departments are required to use all non-general fund money, when not prohibited by law, to pay for programs and anticipated liabilities before they can use general fund money. Now's a good time to discuss mandates. While the Board of Supervisors and the CEO play a large role in how tax dollars are spent, some decisions are already made for us. Mandated funds come from the state and federal government and are meant for specific projects. For example, the sheriff and probation departments monitor lower level offenders and parole violators under the State Realignment Act. Because this state money is meant for this project specifically, the county can't use any of these funds for any other purpose. And under the county's second general fund allocation policy, the sheriff and probation departments must use this state money for this project before they use any general fund money. The third general fund allocation policy addresses the amount of general fund money a department can use to spend on employee benefit increases. The fourth policy makes sure the amount of general fund revenues is equal to general fund expenditures. If a department needs to reduce services, it must define what services will be reduced and rank the reductions in order of severity. If a department request exceeds the CEO's approved budget target amount, the department will need to submit a budget adjustment request. Any budget submission is considered incomplete if the amount requested is more than the general fund money allocated to them. For policy number eight, a department must submit a general adjustment request if they wish to add new employees. For the final general fund allocation process policy, any department year-end residual savings are placed in the general fund for future sharing between all departments. From the middle of February until March, the departments discuss their budget with the CEO's office. In April, the departments turn in their final pages for the D section of the budget book. The D section makes up the bulk of the budget book, and it provides the public and the Board of Supervisors with a detailed accounting of each department's goals, objectives, programs, resources, staffing, and recurring performance outcomes. The first page of each department section provides an organizational chart, information on the number of full-time employees in the department, the source of funding, and how those funds are used. The following pages are more detailed, with information that shows how the department's overall budget is allocated to specific divisions or programs for previous and future years. In May, the County Executive Office releases the proposed annual budget book. The budget book opens with a message from the CEO that contains an overview of the proposed operating plan, provides explanations for what the county's priorities are, and reviews the economic conditions which helped shape those priorities. Other sections in the book provide a statistical profile of the county, an overview of revenues and expenditures, staffing trends, a summary on the improvement of capital projects, like flood control channels and basins and county buildings, and a detail of the legal authorization that shapes the content and format of the budget and adoption process. When we look at the entire budget process, we can see that all four phases overlap each other. We discuss the preparation phase, which lasts from October to June. The approval phase is what happens every year during the second week in June when the CEO presents the budget to the Board of Supervisors. For three days, the departments present their budgets and budget adjustment requests to the board. The public participates in this process by voicing their support or opposition to program funding increases or decreases. One reason why the budget is so difficult to prepare is that the CEO is trying to anticipate the public and policymakers' preferences regarding taxes, spending, and individual priorities. 
By the end of budget week, the board deliberates over everything that has been presented to them. They make their final adjustments, and then the budget is legally binding only when the board votes to approve it. The third phase of the budget process is the execution phase. This execution phase occurs year-round as each department monitors their revenues and expenditures to make sure they do not go over budget. The final phase, which occurs from July to September, is known as the audit phase. And during the audit phase, an external agency checks to ensure the financial books are accurate, efficient, and effective. At the beginning of this video, we asked how the county creates a budget. We hope that by learning about the budget process and the difficult decisions that go into creating a balanced budget, that you feel assured that your money is hard at work for you. The county's annual budget is your annual budget. And we hope that by watching this video, you've learned about the budget process and the important role that you play in it. For more information, visit www.countyofsb.org and click on the budget button on the right side of the page. Thanks for watching CSB TV Channel 20, your channel for county news and information.